it's so nice to have you on a nice warm sunday morning april sunday morning and uh, you know it's a april fools weekend uh, but yes nice to have you join us still on sunday um today we are going to do something really fun this is something that we have wanted to do for some time but we never got really the chance to do it because you know as part of part of the expert network that we have built and the the kind of work we do it's always sort of revolving around some kind of a problem or the other whether it's a patient anxiety whether it's aggression whether it's puppy biting toilet training it's always problem centric we never talk about the fun elements of having a dog right and that's what we want to focus more on going forward because dogs are not just for us to solve a particular problem we get dogs in our life first and foremost to enjoy their company and have fun along with us right and somewhere along the path in our parenting journey we forget that because we just are managing our day to day problems on a you know on a regular basis so so just to take the focus back a little bit into the fun aspects is why we wanted to do this and we are so glad to have namrata who will be introducing you as well on this workshop because she is certified fun for dogs right um okay before we start just quickly introduce you to who we are we are a, again as i spoke about we are a team of uh, trainers behaviorists veterinarians hopefully soon we'll also have dietitians groomers uh, our job really is to be able to help you solve all the problems that you're facing with your dogs uh, so we want to address the challenge of information and awareness we realize that as a country we are we are a first time pet parenting country right like we didn't really have a culture of dogs before but as we more and more in more and more numbers adopt dogs we will face problems because we don't come from a uh, from a place of experience and that's where we want our experts to step in and help us and that's what we are building at the pack dot in the pack dot in is a community not only of the experts but also of pet parents so tomorrow if you have any questions you can even direct it to the other pet parents on the community in arsen what do we do to help solve this problem of awareness we do a lot of workshops like this we have consultations directly one on one with our experts we also do a lot of in person sessions both as consultations and group workshops and finally as i was already talking about we have a community which is an online destination for you to go check out all of our learning resources free of cost ask your questions directly to other people other experts and get answers from them so if you ever have a question do feel free to check into the pack dot in website um these are our experts primarily they are the ones that we do most work with but we also have a lot of other experts that we work with so on your screen you will see kartik dr tanaya shivani Sally is doing the workshop today, so I'll be introducing her. Alicia is also on the call today. Kaveri and we also have Garima who joined in recently. I have to update this presentation. Sorry. Um, okay, so who is Sally? Uh, Sally is someone who's been working with dogs for seven years. I think a lot of people in Bangalore will already know about her. The dog that you see on this picture is also hers. It's uh, she's her name is Abby, and also primarily the reason and motivation why Sally got involved in the dogs world uh, early on. apart from being a behaviorist and trainer she's also a lecturer she's been a phys physiotherapist she's worn a lot of hats basically and she will be one of the experts that will be taking your your session today along with sally we have namrata namrata is currently based out of goa and i we felt that is a perfect place to be doing this workshop from uh, she's been working with dogs as well for a very long time she's also a nationally certified trainer and behaviorist she has worked with a lot of local ngos in delhi and now recently in bangalore as well and as you can see she loves traveling and exploring the outdoors and the dog that you see there is ginger right so these are the two experts uh, and they will be talking about all these topics during the workshop today before they start i will just like sally and namrata to take a moment and introduce themselves and then we can begin sally namrata over to you Hi Shobhit, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. Um, I don't think I need to say anything more about myself, uh, except that I joined this. Uh, I did this as a passion, and now it's become my profession, and I couldn't be any happier. Uh, Namrata, do you want to say something? Nothing more really. Thank you, Shobhit. Thank you, Pak, for having me here, uh, and I'm really excited to be talking about how to have fun with your dog. and i love the introduction i think we do a lot of more problem solving and it is time to take a step back and just enjoy having a dog or two in your life yeah absolutely uh we also have some of our other experts on the call who i'll just give a shout out to dr tanaya is here uh shivani is here i think garima is here alisha is joining all the way from the us so yes uh, a lot of the other experts have also joined and thanks for joining in guys 
Okay, over to you, uh, Sally and Namrata. You can take it up now. Okay, so welcome, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on a Sunday morning, giving us your time. And uh, I hope this workshop will be helpful to all of you. Uh, what we are going to cover today is what do we consider as fun for our dogs? Is that really fun or is it not? Um, what are some of the indoor activities that can be made fun for your dogs? How do you explore the outdoors with your dogs? What are the activities that you can do? What are the points to keep in mind when you're trying to explore uh, your different options? And at the end, of course, we'll take up any questions that you may have. Uh, however, along the uh, journey, if you have any questions, please do put them in the chat box. So depending on the relevance and importance, we may take them up at that time itself or we'll take them up at the end of the uh, session. But please do add them in the chat box below. Um, we are going to be covering uh, various topics throughout the session. So I hope you find it useful. And uh, the first part, um, Shobit, can we go to the next slide, please? So before we start off with the actual activities, there's a little bit of an introduction that we wanted to give you about what is fun for our dogs. How do we know that our dogs are having fun? What are the signs to look out for uh, to ensure that yes, the dog is having fun or is it stressed, is it anxious? So Namrata here is going to give you a little bit uh, information about this. So over to you Namrata. Thank you. Uh, next slide please show with. So I wanted to uh, gonna ask you two questions. One, the first one is how do you know your dog is happy? And that is, uh, you know, that uh, the answer is with your dog. The answer is looking at their dog body language. And that is something as any pet parent, you must always be aware of because your dog is always communicating to you. So when you look at your dog, you know, look at where, where's their face, where are their eyes, their ears, their, their body, look at their tail. Um, and that's going to give you a lot of information about their state of mind. So for instance, a happy dog, much like the, the picture you see, is going to have a very nice uh, tail wag, an easy relaxed tail wag. The body will be kind of loose. Uh, the ears will be in a neutral position, maybe relaxed. Sometimes it depends on the dogs. You know, some of those dogs have uh, different types of ears. A relaxed and open mouth is often what we see. And a stressed out dog, very obvious signs, of course, tail tucked under. Uh, but some of the, you might see hackles raised as well. Uh, but some of the more subtle signs, like just, you know, being a little hesitant to try something, looking away from whatever you are uh, you're trying to, uh, showing the dog or attempting to try with the dog. The ears may be tucked back. Uh, your, eye, your eyes may be, you know, whale way eyes is, is what we call them. So just keep watching your dog and you will know uh, if your dog is happy. There are a lot of resources online, including the pack on dog body language. Um, so just remember dog is always communicating with you. And the second question, next slide. What is enrichment? Um, enrichment is uh, any activity that improves your dog's mental state, basically allows them to be a dog. And the way I like to break it down is to look at the five senses of your dog. Are you engaging the dog's sense of sight, uh, sound, taste, touch, and most importantly, smell? Because the sense of smell is the dog's strongest sense. Uh, so with any activities that you try which allow your dog to be a dog, just make sure you're using these five five senses uh, very constructively. And of course, uh, just remember dog is always telling you if they are enjoying something or not. And every dog will be different. Uh, remember that. Cool. All right, next slide, please. Awesome. So now I'm going to pass it back to Siley to discuss some of the fun you can have inside your homes. Over to you. Thanks, Namrata. Um, so when you start enjoying with your dog, or when you bring your dog home, uh, the first few months till your vaccines and all are done, ideally you're not supposed to take your dog outdoors because uh, the chances of your dog contracting infections from the soil, from the mud, etc. are, uh, you know, very high. So, but if you leave your dog just idle in the house, lying about, only feeding it and, you know, just like doing some basic things, that's not enough. Your dog needs to engage its senses. Your dog needs to be kept occupied so that it knows what it needs. It knows how to control its emotions. It knows how to settle down. So activities that can be done indoors are very, very crucial. And you can start them off right at the beginning as soon as you bring your puppy home. So we're going to be talking a little bit about these activities. Now, a lot of people believe that when you talk about indoor activities, you need a lot of equipment. 
you need a lot of you need to spend a lot of money on buying different toys um that's not really the case shobit could we have the next slide please so the first thing that we're going to look at are diy activity now diy are do it yourself so here's your chance to get as creative as possible use whatever you have available at home so in my house never does an amazon box go out of the house in trash an amazon box is mine and abby's best friend all i do is i uh, put some food in the box i stuff the box with different things so sometimes it's just newspaper uh, sometimes it's her toys sometimes it's different pieces of cloth so each thing has a different smell a different texture a different sound to it so like namrata mentioned we are engaging all the different scents now abby is a dog who doesn't like too many toys except for tennis balls so when i put a box with tennis balls it's always like a contradiction for her you know it's a conflict should i play with the ball or should i eat the food so there your dog is thinking for itself so it's using its brain the textures are all different so here i'm using my dog's different senses to try and figure out what is it that my dog wants and it's her choice because i've given her the box she can choose whether she wants to play with the ball or whether she wants to rip the cardboard box apart or whether she wants to pick up the food and eat it in a calm manner so you are actually engaging your dog's sense and giving your dog senses and giving your dog a choice to do what it would like so here's a video of a foster puppy that namrata had uh, it's an indi and here you can see that namrata has given her a cardboard box it's closed and there's some kibble in it and she is kind of figuring out how to open this box how do how does she get to the food etc so we can you play the first video please on the left so you can see here that she's <laughs> Okay. And that's the best way to keep a dog engaged. And she's almost figured it. Almost figured it. And there you go. There you go. And you can hear Namrata encouraging her in the background, telling her that yes, this was amazing. So the next time Namrata gives her something, she's always going to go back and say, "Oh, last time I got this and I got my food. Let me try this out now." So your encouragement is also very important in this. It's not that you've just given your dog a box and walked away. You need to be there. You need to teach your dog. Sometimes it does tend to happen. Like she figured it out quickly, but some dogs may not be able to. So in that case, it's imperative that you, as pet parents, help them. the idea is to create fun for your dogs and not frustrate your dog eventually a dog that does not get to the food will create frustration in the dog and your dog will start hating these activities instead of enjoying them so uh, that was about diy so you can get creative with whatever you have in the house so you can use uh, muffin trays you can use party hats you can use bowls you can use pillow covers uh you can use just your normal towels um you know you can wrap some food in the towel and fold the towel and give the towel to the dog the dog has to either figure out how to unfold it unroll it or even just you know pick it up and fling it about so the food falls out that's up to your dog to figure out so any object in the house that you have you can use to create diy activities and uh, here i would like to mention that the pack has done an entire workshop on enrichment ideas uh, indoor enrichment ideas so do go check that video and link out it's there on the community uh, next going to store bought toys now here also you have a lot of toys that you can buy for your dog if you are not able to use homemade things you can definitely go and pick out toys for your dog So I have a few examples over here. So this is called a snuffle mat. So it's basically a bunch of cloth pieces that are tied together on a mat. And what I do is I hide the pieces of food within this mat, and Abby has to use her nose and go and dig into it, and you know find the food in this whole this whole mat. Uh, the next thing I have here is a Kong toy. which basically is a food dispensing toy so i stuff some of her food inside and i give it to her and she has to figure out how to find uh, the food and how to eat the food abby being a food motivated dog this keeps her occupied for a good 
15 to 20 minutes and to make it more challenging and not as easy as just you know hitting it and getting the food out once she has figured out like the initial after the introduction to the gong i started freezing it so now the food is harder for it's harder for her to get the food out so it keeps her engaged for a longer period of time once she's done eating the gong she is sort of exhausted because she's had to work for her food and then she goes and sleeps so for someone who is uh, mentioning separation anxiety even abby had separation anxiety to begin with when i got her and this is how i had cured it because at that time i was working longer hours and i used to be out of the house for a very long time so all i did was give her a frozen give her her meal in a frozen form and she'd be so tired after this after half an hour of engaging with this that she would sleep throughout till i came back from work and i stopped seeing any kind of distraction and separation anxiety behavior in her um along with that this is something called as a snuffle kebab which is basically again like a snuffle mat but a harder challenge because on the snuffle mat is a flat surface so it's easy to pick out the food but in this the gaps are very uh, tiny and you have to really stuff the food inside to make it challenging so since i've been doing enrichment activities with abby for a very long time uh, she sort of figured out most of them and she does them very quickly now so i've gone up one level and i've done something called as a mental enrichment circle so shobhit if you could play the second video here i've laid out all different types of enrichment uh, toys in a circle and she has to finish them one by one each one does a different thing so this is a game where she has to learn to check out the flap she has to open the flap to get the food this is the snuffle mat where she's eating it here's the diy where i've put some food in a rolled up towel and she has to figure out how to unroll it and find the food Here's a box with some newspaper and treats put inside, and she has to figure out how to get the food out. This is a pong, so there was some food put in it, and she had to figure out. So she's rolled it about and all that. She figured out how to get the food out from there. So if you saw, she just flung it a little bit so that the food would fall out. And then finally, I have the licky mat. with peanut butter to calm her down after this activity because i don't want her to get very hyper after these games are done so here she is at the end this is a winding down activity where i've given her a licky mat with some peanut butter on it and all she's doing is she's settling down and she's licking the peanut butter off this licky mat so at the end of all the activity where she got excited thinking she's getting food at each of these stations the last station was a calming activity where she got to sniff she got to lick the texture of the mat is quite uh, serrated as you can see so she really has to dig her tongue in to find the peanut butter so this is basically what uh, i do with abby nowadays because she sort of figured out these different enrichment activities by themselves so you can again get creative not necessarily you keep out all the activities uh, you know you can keep out two or three to begin with and then build it up slowly over a period of time this is not only for puppies but this is also for older dogs senior dogs who cannot get as much uh, physical exercise as is recommended uh, depending on their health conditions this could also be used at a time when it's monsoon season and you can't take your dogs outdoors for very long uh, activities it could be now in summers when it's really hot and uh, you don't want to take your dog out again for walks for a very long time so these activities Hello, Sally. Yeah, I think we have lost her. Just give it a minute. We'll be back. Yes. Sure. So, I think this is a lot of enrichment toys that Kaya Sally was talking about. I don't know if anyone has tried. Oh, hi, Sally, you're back. Hi, I'm sorry. The power went out, so the internet. No worries. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Shobhiti was saying something. You can continue. I was just asking if anyone has tried enrichment toys before. I think Zoe has some enrichment, uh, but I was just asking everyone else as well. Right. Yeah. So basically, this is just a great way of keeping your dog occupied indoors. Uh, Shobhiti, can we have the second slide? I mean, the next slide, please. Oh, lovely. Shubham has also used some enrichment toys. Nice.
so uh, another great way of uh, doing indoor activities is doing nose work now sniffing like namrita said is or the scent uh, sense of smell is one of the best oh pranati has done the enrichment circle that's great yeah so the sense of smell is one of the strongest senses in a dog and using that in the right manner can actually help channelize your dog's energy and uh, hyperactivity or even build confidence in a dog so someone was mentioning their dog is anxious so doing a lot of nose work helps your dog become more confident uh, in itself so here is a video of the foster puppy that namrita had where she's doing nose work the food is hidden in the sheets and uh, she has to figure out how to find it so um, shobit could you play that video so um <laughs> Every morning, either my dog gets mute. like a thirty to forty you minute walk, my commentary. or she gets like. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So anyway, here she's basically just uh, also guiding along with the commentary. There's also guidance for the puppy where she's showing the puppy. If you can see, she's pointing and showing that you know, go back, go search for it, go find it. So, like I said, the idea is to make it fun for your dog. and not cause frustration where your puppy is like where is the food where is the food that should not happen the other thing that you can do with your dogs indoors is agility so uh, you can use anything that you have in your house as simple as a hula hoop if you have one otherwise you can teach activities using chairs in the house uh, bolsters anything that you have in the house so here is a video of me uh, doing agility with one of my training puppies without using any equipment so here i'm teaching the dog to jump there's a weave going on this can be even done with uh, chairs this is a figure of 8 and then finally we have the crawl so these are all activities that can be done indoors again there's no equipment really being used but the idea is to be as creative as possible you can even use chairs to do the weave you can use bolsters to do the jump if you have a hula hoop you can get the dog to jump through the hula hoop um you know if you have steps you can do up and down on the steps just uh take just be careful that if your surface is very slippery do put out a yoga mat like how i've put out there so that it doesn't cause uh, damage to your dog's joints that's very very important especially in puppies because they are still growing and their growth plates are not completely fused so the chance to uh, create damage to the dog's joints is very high so you need to have a soft surface for landing purposes and let the dog not skid and slide all over the place um so let's move on to the next slide so um when we talk about enrichment we only think of different activities uh, so yeah shubham you are talking about recommended agility activities what i just showed you can be done with a golden retriever as well um of course i mean size wise it's bigger than a beagle so maybe getting it to crawl under your knees may not be the right uh, right thing but if you have a chair that's big enough and has space beneath the legs you can get your dog to crawl through that or you could get a tunnel from amazon um, you know you could get your dog to just walk through the tunnel it's an indoor tunnel um you could i maybe if you have like a laundry stand or something you could get the dog to crawl under that so again like i said get creative use things that are there in your house and you could have a great time with your golden retriever so when we talk about enrichment we only think about activities okay but we are not necessarily talking about activities to be done with your dog any experience that your dog has indoors can be enriching for your dog so something as simple as having a wind chime in your house okay a wind chime in your house i'm sure uh, no one thinks about it it's just something that you put in your house either for feng shui or just because you like it or because you have a nice garden whatever it may be uh something as tiny as that can be stimulating for your dog because it's constantly ringing and remember your dog's sense of smell and sound is much stronger than uh, that of us humans so your dog's hearing it at higher volumes than what we are uh something as simple as having a garden with different scents in sense of 
uh, plants, flowers, fruits, etc., is enriching by itself. Uh, having a party at home where your dog is a part of it, there's going to be music, there's going to be people wearing different clothes, different perfumes, uh, there's going to be smells of different food that's not usually in the house all the time. So that itself is an enriching experience. An experience as simple as having an urban club person come home and maybe clean the house or even have you have a mani pedi at home or uh, you have big basket people coming over with all different kinds of uh, materials. All these are enriching experiences for your dog. So when you talk about enrichment, it does not necessarily mean games. It does not necessarily mean uh, toys. It means experiences. And these can be anything that happened in your day-to-day -day life. So it's important for you to make sure your dog is comfortable in these situations for which basic obedience and training also plays a big role. So if your dog is not well socialized, it's not going to be comfortable in a party environment. If your dog is not uh, you know, used to being comfortable with, say, a trolley bag coming, your dog is not going to be comfortable with the urban club people because most of them bring their equipments in a trolley bag. Your dog might start reacting to that situation. So right from the time your dog is a puppy, you need to start teaching your dog to be socialized or comfortable in very, very different scenarios. And that's something you can work on, on building confidence of your puppy in different situations, in uh, creating comfortable situations for your puppy. So again, get creative, not necessary. You need to have people like Urban Club coming over. You can create those scenarios at home yourself. Can we have the next slide, Shoulder? So now we're going to move on to outdoor activities. Namrata is going to be taking up uh, and talking to you about these. And we'll take up any questions that you have on indoor activities at the end of the session. So please do put down your questions in the question box. Over to you, Namrata. Thanks, Aini. I'm going to talk about how we can make our outdoor time with our dogs more enriching and more fun. Um, next slide. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is how to add variety in your daily walks. Uh, so the first and most easy thing to do is explore new routes in your colony, in your neighborhood. Uh, for something as simple as instead of, uh, you know, something as simple as crossing the road and walking on the other side of the road is a whole new world for your dog. All the new scents, new sounds, different types of people may be walking there. Um, what I do is I get, you know, I alternate between getting out of my building and going right and going left every day. So there's always something different. Every day my dog is excited for her walk. She doesn't know where she's going and what she'll see and what she'll smell and hear. Um, another easy uh, way to add fun and enrichment on your daily walks is to explore different terrains. So I know we live in a city, but if you just look around, there's a lot of different surfaces to walk on, from your regular tarmac roads to the footpath, to up and down cobble streets, uh, to sometimes construction sites which have mud outside um, on the road. If you're lucky enough, there will be gardens or parks that are dog friendly, so you can walk over there. Um, so I would encourage you to just open your eyes and see what is around you because you will be surprised by how much variety there is and you, how, much, how much more your dogs can explore. Uh, another very simple um, activity that you can try on your daily walk for just you know five minutes of, of your walk is to basic obedience commands like a sit or a high five or if there's people around and your dog is friendly and it likes other people, you can ask them, you know, can you pet my dog? Can you ask for a high five, which I do a lot. Um, and feel free to take treats or toys or whatever rewards you're using um, that your dog responds to, um, to uh, when you try commands outdoors. And yes, it perhaps will be more, dis I mean, very challenging and because it's a more distracting environment, but that's what you want, right? You want your dog to be able to focus on you and listen to you outdoors anyway. So it's it's a win-win, uh, both for you in terms of obedience and uh, for your dog's enrichment uh, that day. And uh, finally, you can always try uh, games and agility outdoors too. And again, you don't need the equipment. You can use what's around. So the video I'm going to show you now is uh, my dog going on and off. So up and down these mud construction piles that is right outside my home that appeared just two weeks ago. You can keep it on mute. 
And you can see here, I, I did take treats with me, one some of our favorite treats. Here I did a recall because she just kept on running. And you can see it's a totally different uh, surface for something she's not at all used to on a day to day basis. And I was just lucky in a way that all the construction sound outside that's bothering me offered her like a fun morning walk experience. So just make use of what's in your environment. Um, next slide, please. Great. Adding variety every week. So something I like to tell everyone is once a week, do something that's fun for your dog, different from their regular routine. Uh, uh, an easy tip is to just open your Google Maps, look at your city and see what's right outside your city, any of the green spaces outside. Um, I heard Delhi, Pune, Bangalore, all of these cities have uh, you know, green spaces right outside. And some of you have them within your city as well. Um, but you just have to, usually these spaces are forests or unclaimed land or land with just overgrown grass. Um, and it, uh, it is just, like a, again, like a whole new world for your dog to be out there sniffing. During being able to be a dog, you'll have different surfaces, different smells, obviously. You're likely to have different sites, maybe cows, pigs, who knows. Um, so I would uh, uh, you know, recommend just opening Google Maps and doing some research. The amazing thing uh, about Google is that you get to see reviews for each of these places where you just click and sometimes you get photos. So you have people reviewing uh, very recently. You have photos from a recent time. For instance, there's a, a lake near where I used to live. And I found out that uh, it is totally, it's not, there's no water in there anymore. It's just a lake bed. And that's how I discovered uh, Hesselgatta Lake. In, uh, in Bangalore, right outside Bangalore. Um, so it was quite a cool find and uh, obviously it was fun, right? It was fun and different for, for, for my dog. Another thing you can try like once a week is uh, to go swimming for those dogs who love water. Uh, most cities these days have uh, a doggy swimming pool and you can you know, book in advance. Of course, if you're, I, I would recommend uh, booking a private slot so there's not too many dogs and it's not overwhelming for your dog. And uh, a lot of them also have, uh, uh, you know, someone there to make sure it's like a, your dog is learning how to swim. Don't pick them up and throw them in. That is not fun. That is absolutely not fun for your dog. Another thing you can consider, um, you know, on a weekly basis is visiting pet-friendly places. Uh, cafes are a great option. Uh, you can always call in advance and ask the place, you know, if, if they can accommodate a dog. Can they put a table outside uh, for you, for you and your pet? Um, you can also ask them if they have food for your dog. A lot of cafes would oblige. Um, and finally, you can visit a friend's place. Now, this is something I have been doing a lot because my dog is older and she doesn't have uh, the stamina and uh, enthusiasm for these, you know, long walks and exploring as much. So I just put her in an auto, which is great. Autos do allow dogs. Uh, usually, and I take her to a friend's place. So she's getting extra pampered by other people. She's getting extra treats just for being a dog. <laughs> and uh, she's getting a new experience that one that once a week. So it's really fun. And um, yeah, you, you just have to kind of just see what's around you, what's, what's in your city or near your city, and you'll be amazed by the types of activities you can, uh, can tag your dog along for. Next slide, please. And finally, you can consider offbeat activities. As uh, Shobit said, you know, we are a new pet parent country and uh, the world is opening up for our dogs. There are a lot more friendly, uh, dog friendly places and your dog is an animal and they would love being outdoors. Uh, so some of the activities I think you can just try right away is trekking, camping, exploring water bodies. So I'll go through each one of them. So for uh, trekking, Again, I recommend Google being your best friend. Just Google trekking trails near you and there will be tons, 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 tons. Uh, one thing I recommend is to uh, just keep browsing to see, to find descriptions of the trail. Usually uh, all these adventure and tour companies, they have a you know one paragraph blurb and they mention the, the distance of the trek, uh, the route of the trail. They'll mention if there's an entry fee 
and there's sometimes there's a forest guard you know at the at the beginning of the trail and which is really helpful for me they categorize trails to easy moderate and difficult so i go for the easy ones i'm not that confident going on longer challenging ones um and they are they are great places to start you have the option of calling up these adventure to companies being like can i bring my dog along which i have done a lot and i'm often surprised by the response they like sure um or you can go uh, by yourself and by that i mean take a friend or family member along it's not safe to just go by yourself um out there so you know do consider trekking and you don't have to go to a himachal or an uttarakhand to go trekking just search around your city uh there you know we are blessed to have a lot of uh, nature around us and you may, it may not be obvious right here, you know in your apartment but there is a lot so i started off with day long treks you know when i was exploring this option with my dog and there were tons and tons and tons of options and because i know my dog she's a retriever i know she loves water i chose those routes which had a stream nearby or a water body somewhere along because i know that's what she likes so it does help remember what we talked about what is fun for a dog how do you know if your dog has fun i was just observing and i knew i knew she loves water it's like you know she's attracted to water she's a magnet so i did try to find those easy routes with water bodies and that's how i started um and this is a picture of her in himachal so it's great you know the the world just gets bigger the more you explore with your dog then we have camping um call ahead on campsites and see if dogs are available uh, dogs are uh, allowed in there some campsites will say no to dogs because they're too too close to forest areas and of course there's all, there is a risk of wild animals some campsites are very very dog friendly they know the dog friendly routes they'll have uh, you know food and other amenities for the dogs um and they they will be able to cater the experience for you and your dog so call ahead again google is your best friend uh just search for campsites near you um and also just uh, usually campsites will have the equipment needed you don't need to come with a tent and all of that um uh, so just call ahead and find out uh, what uh, what is you know what is available uh, near you and finally water bodies i did mention my dog is a retriever which is why this is uh, you know this is the part, this is the bit that i've explored the most here is a picture of her going kayaking uh but lakes ponds rivers streams beaches all these are fantastic uh spaces to take your dog uh you will be surprised how even your bath hating dogs will enjoy a splash about in in a in a stream or a river or you know you know charge ahead of the waves and run back so i would encourage you trying this uh the in the picture here actually this is the first time i tried uh putting my dog on a kayak and i was quite happy she didn't move uh but it does require a little bit of planning well one of course your dog needs to be okay being lifted in and putting in putting into the kayak uh but also i i did observe this stream and did observe other people kayaking to see what mistakes they made or you know which which kayaks overturned and which ones didn't and i was very comfortable trying this activity for the first time here because the this it was a very short stream and it wasn't deep at all so even if i fell i knew nothing would happen to me i would be able to very uh, comfortably take care of my dog uh, so it does uh, pay it does you know really help if you are able to do your research beforehand um the internet a, the, the internet is great for that and just you know be there and observe and don't jump right into activities which you yourself may not be sure of um and uh, but you know dogs love new things like we've been talking and uh, being out in on different uh, experiences up mountains rivers camping pond they're, they're just great um, you you will be surprised at how even the shyest of dogs some you will find you know oh this is this is something that they excel at you know climbing up running down entering water they're winning all the time uh, which is why uh, these are great activities to try uh, with your dog of course provided you do your research before uh, next slide please so one of the questions we had for you is what training commands should your dog know for the to to enjoy such activities uh, a poll has been launched so please type in your answers um, and they can be every oh, anything we discussed uh, from the indoors to the outdoors no i was just mentioning that it's a it's a vote not it's a vote sorry yeah, it's a people vote. can't type it in 
but if they have if they feel that they missed out the command that they should practice yes, yes. you can just I think Sally and I have given some answers already yeah. you can put it in the chat box guys also we had also put up a poll before asking you if you have ever traveled with your dogs with uh, you know so would love to know that as well if if that has been an excursion or an activity that you've done with your dogs before Yeah, Pranit says recall, stay and wait. Super, super important. Okay. So I think we have a few responses. Uh, three people have traveled with dogs before, two haven't. Guys, do vote in so that we know everyone's response. Mm -hmm. And almost everyone who has voted has said that recall is the most important command. A recall is a simple come when called. So when you say come, your dog should come to you. Yeah. And that is life saving and stress relieving if your dog responds to, to the basic recall. One person has voted for a stay. I think Aina has also raised her hand. Do you want to take a question right now, Namrata? Sure. Aina, please go ahead. Oh, we have traveled. Oh, were you raising a hand to say that you have traveled? Okay. Great. Okay, awesome, cool. Uh, yeah, Thanks. so six votes for recall, one vote for stay. I guess recall is the most important command, Namrata. I would agree too. And the stay is really helpful. Awesome. So checklist before heading out. Uh, so one, water and water bowl. And here I will stress, please carry water for yourself also. There have been times so embarrassing raining outside i have you know put the raincoat on my dog everything is set and i go out only to realize i forgot my own umbrella okay so please take care of yourself as well when you try any of these uh, activities outdoors carry treats because you never know when they'll be handy it's a distracting environment out there you may need that extra reinforcement to get your dog to come back um, or stay longer uh, for instance a long leash, very helpful. This allows your dog to have a lot more mobility and freedom. Thank you, Sidi. Uh, and you know, you can, you will still have control. They come in 20 feet, 50 feet. I think there's even a hundred feet one. Uh, so choose one that <laughs> that would make sense for you. I do tend to carry a spare leash and a collar, especially when I'm going doing longer trips. Uh, and by long, I mean a day long is long enough for me. So a day long or long. Because you would never know what may snap when and you just want to be careful. A towel in case you think your dog will get dirty or wet. Um, and this is something I like to carry this because I use autos a lot. And I absolutely do not want to dirty the auto. And uh, I just want to be respectful of other people and their, their property. Uh, and take another human with you. This is something I've said before and I cannot say it more. Uh, please be careful. Take, you know, if you're especially if you're going on trails, treks, or new places you're not sure of. And if you are able to, please, you know, ask a friend or a family member to come along. Um, it, uh, I know for me, at least it helps to have another human support, even if they are not going to be the ones to actually, you know, handle my dog. Uh, it just, uh, it, it's just, uh, it's good to have one other human, especially as you start off trying uh, any of these offbeat activities. And food for the number of days you are uh, away. Some of the hacks are, uh, if your dog eats kibble, just carry an extra bag. Boiled eggs are great. They do last several days as long as you don't remove the peel. Bananas, bread if your dog is fine eating bread, up to you. And usually wherever you go, I mean, this is India, there's always uh, people around. So there'll be like a local village store uh, uh, for meat if that's what you're looking for. And uh, and if you know if you if you know your dog likes certain things or actually does not like certain things, you will that, that means you will have to plan for a few days plus maybe two two days more so you have enough food and take it along with you. Um, and my last thing uh, in terms of checklist is a first aid kit and any regular medication your dog needs. My go-to first aid item is cotton and betadine for any cuts and scrapes that uh, that could that ginger can have or could like experience. And uh, one thing I do swear by, and that is just me is coconut oil. Because my dog, I know she has a lot of skin issues, and I don't want it to flare up. So it's something I want to keep consistent in her diet. 
uh, see, these are the two things that work for me. And you'll have to see what you know, what uh, uh, what kind of first aid equipment that you uh, will need for your dog, depending on where you're going and what you're trying. A vet visit before uh, you try any of these activities is a good idea. And by this, I mean not the daily routine walks. It means the longer trips or the the offbeat activities that you're trying. Uh, do have a word with your vet, uh, and they because they know that your dog, they will maybe have specific suggestions for you. Next slide, please, Shobhan. Awesome. Points to remember. And I'm going to pass it on to Sally uh, so, to discuss. Uh, Namrata, could you please tell us what is on that? Uh, yes, 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 so yes. Can you go back to the slide, the previous slide? Uh, I am sorry. This one. So uh, I should, uh, I will describe this picture, but I will also say uh, all this planning, uh, you know, sometimes things don't go according to plan. And your dogs will do things that make you realize you just need to be humble and make you realize you are living with a dog. So that is my dog after she fell into a pit of cow dung. And it was the nastiest thing that I've had to see, the nastiest thing that I've had to clean up. She very conveniently fell in and I had to, I had to run and like not only lift her out but also as soon as I did that run away because she was shaking and happy and bouncing and in her head she probably like oh most enriching day ever and I was just uh, not happy but what can you do right you just smile and move on um, and in this particular instance there was a little like waterfall nearby so that's that's the picture where it is and after that thankfully I found a lady who was watering her garden so I requested her if I could borrow her hose and then do that, like hose her down. And then I had to walk back to my room and give her a bath. Uh, so sometimes no amount of planning uh, will prepare you, uh, but just go along with a smile on your face because uh, you love your dog and you want the best for them. We have a sense dogs of humor. Dogs. dogs will be dogs, right? Dogs will be dogs. The very unfortunate thing is this, I was two steps away from this waterfall, which is why I had unleashed her. And she just took a due turn and went to the cow dump, which I had not seen at all. So. <laughs> and Maybe we should add a slide on uh, cow dump based activities. Clearly, that's fun for dogs, no? It is fun. Oh, dogs love say, cow dung. They do. Dogs I, love well, cow dung. Her skin was very soft huh, after this episode. <laughs> so, silver lining. Always look at the silver lining. <laughs> Sally, over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Namrata. So uh, before we conclude, we would like to reiterate on certain points that you need to remember before doing any kind of activity with your dog, indoors or outdoors. So uh, you need to select an activity which is uh, you know, suitable for your dog's age, breed, uh, medical conditions, dog's personality. So if your dog is anxious or is not willing to do a certain activity, you need to respect that and give your dog time to warm up to it. I do understand that sometimes when you're traveling, you are there only for a, a you know limited number of days and you really want to explore something with your dog. But if your dog is not ready for it, uh, I would suggest you don't push your dog. Remember, the whole idea is to have fun with your dogs and not to stress your dog out further. Uh, you need to be aware of certain medical conditions. So, for example, if your dog is already prone to joint issues, uh, like I mentioned before, make sure that the surface uh, that you are training your dog on or you're taking your dog on is conducive. It's not harmful to your dog in any manner. Um, if your dog has heart issues, um, don't you know go on very steep climbs which will stress the heart out. Um, you know these kind of things you need to consider before taking your dog out on any activity. Uh, personality, like I said, if your dog is anxious then you need to choose activities that will actually bring out your dog's uh, confidence and not stress the dog out further for puppies try and keep uh, you know very short exposure to new things so that your puppy starts learning in a cumulative manner don't just push your dog onto a new activity your puppy onto a new activity and expect it to have fun your puppy needs to be taught and needs to have a good time to keep continuing uh, enjoying these activities um, breed specific. So like uh, Namrata said, her dog is a retriever, my dog is a Labrador. They both love water. So we love to do activities where uh, you know they have some sort of access to water. 
So the picture that you saw earlier of camping, uh, that campsite uh, is one in Bangalore. It's called Backyard Camp. Uh, you could check it out for those who are in Bangalore. Uh, it's a pet friendly campsite which is based on a river. So both the dogs in the photo, Shadow and Abby, they were so happy to be by the lakeside, just romping about in the water. Um, Shadow went one step ahead and rolled in the mud and the grass and uh, you know he also had to be hosed down at the end of it. Um, so it was just a lot of fun for the dogs. Uh, so you have to make sure that your dog is getting that kind of exposure that it requires. Now dogs like beagles, etc., they scent hounds or even cockers for that matter. They love like putting their nose to the ground and just walking around. So trekking trails work great for them. They may not be that comfortable with water. So don't try and push your dog in the water. If they love it, great. If not, it's okay. Stick to doing activities on the ground itself. What do you do if you have an anxious dog? Number one, do not push your dog to face, it, face its fears as you call it. Expose your dog in a gentle, calm manner. If your dog is going forward, great. If it's turning around, respect its boundary and take a step back. Just let your dog observe the activity. Let your dog scent out what's happening. Let it just be there and absorb you know, what's happening. Don't say, okay, my dog has to go on the kayak or my dog has to enter the water. Nothing like that. It's all right. Do it step by step. Now, when does it stop becoming fun? It just stops becoming fun when you push your dog to do something it doesn't want to do. It's as simple as that. In the name of fun nowadays, people do tend to take things a little, you know, they get carried away. They tend to do things that may not be really conducive for the dog. And this video is a prime example of uh, this. So this video is from uh, two weeks ago when I visited Goa. And this was on the beach in the night. Uh, right outside the shacks uh, there were four or five shacks uh, right next to each other playing all loud music each one was clashing with the other we as humans were getting irritated in the uh, to be very honest uh, the second thing was the wave the tides were very high that day it was a very high tide day and the water was coming closer and closer on the beach and here was a group of humans with uh, two indies who were obviously very very stressed in that environment but uh, the people were seemingly having a good time because they were having their drinks they were dancing they were partying but the dogs were very very anxious and you know that though you want you you want to involve your dog in every activity that you do you have to remember that they are dogs they may not enjoy everything that you do so here's a small clip from that evening Chobit if you could play So here is the dog, uh, it's on leash. The humans are not even really looking at it. The dog is obviously restless. And it's a nice you can hear the music, there's music blaring in the background. Uh, there was also another Indian here. This is the best There's a lot of humming signals going on, licking up the lips, crouching down under the uh, beach chair. There were people who were randomly walking up and trying to pet these dogs and these dogs were actually snarling and like giving clear cut signals like stay, stay away from me. But obviously their boundaries were not being respected. Here, even if I had taken my dog, which I would never, but even if I had taken my dog in this kind of an environment and had seen these signs that my dog is stressed, one, I would walk away from that situation immediately. Second, I would not allow anybody else to come and pet my dog in this situation because you know what? They're animals at the end of the day. You cannot predict how they react. And in this situation, had one of these dogs bitten another person, it actually wouldn't be the dog's fault. The dog is just reacting out of self-defense, out of stress. But unfortunately, the dog would get a bad name here and a label saying the dog is aggressive, which is really, really unfair to the dog. As behaviorists, as trainers, we will always, always advocate for the dog. So here is a prime example of what you should not do with your dog. Please do not take your dog out into situations which are stressful. 
so that is why even in bangalore if you notice though there are a lot of pubs and uh, breweries and eateries which are pet friendly they usually ask you to uh, they are usually pet friendly only up till 5 or 6 pm and not on weekends that's because they know that the crowds are going to be much more there's going to be a lot of uh, revelry fun things that are happening people might be dancing people might be smoking which is and most of the pet friendly areas are outdoors which are also the smoking zones smoke whether passive or active as everybody knows is harmful to humans uh, as well as our dogs you should never smoke in front of our dogs or we should never expose our dogs to cigarette smoke as well so here is the reason why most of these places refuse entry to your dogs on weekends or in the evening when you know that they tend to get crowded so please do not take your dogs out in such uh, situations do not take them out to such places go at a time when it's going to be more calm and so that you have fun with your dog and your dog has fun with you so we end our seminar here with these words and i hope uh, it was helpful for all of you and please do put down your questions there are a few in the message box already we will take them up one by one but if you do have any questions any comments do put them down in the chat box so that we can take them up thank you everybody